update me, Magog. The, the drilling proceeds uneventfully, Crichton. Direct input telemetry indicates that the drill head has penetrated 40 kilometers through the uppermost mantle and into the region of the lightness here. Heat flow profiles read normal. Chemical composition? What you would expect. Predominantly silicon and aluminium, with lower percentages of basalt, magnesium, iron, traces of phosphorus, sodium... All right, that's enough. By the way, I don't expect to find anything in particular. As first director of cartel, my task is to envision and organize. I'll foresee the ends, you sort out the means. And any difficulties we might encounter along the way. My role is clear to me, Crichton. Your role? Your purpose, Magog? Multiple analysis of global organization of geometrics. What you exist for is to carry out the wishes of cartel. To carry out my wishes, Magog which at this moment are to keep me informed of the test drilling. Yes, Crichton. The on-site technicians expect penetration of the asthenosphere in 15 minutes. Minerals on tap. I like the idea of that. Given the absence of crustal anomalies and a suitably sophisticated pressure control system, the viability of the project seems likely. Seems likely? <laughs> we spend a billion dollars giving a third-generation A1 device soft-edge personality traits, and it ends up talking like a politician. Seems likely. It will work. Although speculation on the nature of potential timelines fascinates me, if you wish to discuss the matter further... Sarcasm as well, Magog. Very good. I learned from my masters, sir. Put me in touch with the drill site. Current simon density 2.9 grams per cubic centimetre. Temperature 698 degrees Celsius and rising according to profile. Spin rate 16,000 RPM and steady. I copy that, Jefferson. Eight minutes to penetration of crustal interface. Seismic scatterback showing some deep level anomalies. What could that be, Royce? Mm, maybe sonic angels caused by basal fracturing of rock. Who knows? Maybe Beelzebub coming up to say hello. If I wasn't sitting right above the place where he's likely to appear, I'd laugh at that. Report. All readings are in line with projections, Sir James. Shall I give the figures, sir? No, don't bother with that. There are no problems. We have a sonic shadow on the Ulf map, but it could be a natural feature. Subduction of a lithospheric plate or something. Just keep me informed if operations begin to drift offline. Pretty touchy, huh? Even God can get nervous at times, Royce. Don't worry about it. You got anything more on that anomaly? Well, it's big. I'm talking about right off the screen, big. Not much detail, just a smudge on the instrumentation. But right at the probe limit, I can resolve sort of filaments. Periodic intrusion could be. Strange, though, they're not vertical. Any hunches, then? How about a spider that's 50 kilometers across, sitting at the heart of a web of fire? <laughs> <laughs> not bad, Royce. Well, we'll know for sure in five minutes when the drill gets there. Want some more figures? No, but I guess I'll need them. Wouldn't want to upset God. <laughs> off the hill, we lose the breath of power, lose the way. No. It spills its energy over the whole land, Dale. It won't desert us. I feel the whole of the universe trembling. I see a deserted place. Horizons of grass. An empty sky. A 
Helen, what's happening? Hey, Peterson, Kane, help me! Give us a hand! Attention all personnel. One minute to completion of drill test 23566. Stand by. Stand by. Helen, do you hear me? I can touch the stars, Dale. I can see gates leading everywhere. We'd better get ourselves clear, Dale. Just in case. Flower has opened. My God! Look at the sky. There's threads of lightning. They're above the drill site. The whole sky's churning. I make the flash of lightning my eyes. I have no body. I make endurance my body. Uruz, Bekana. Right off the scale. Explain. The drill head appears to be within meters of a Moharovitchik discontinuity Crichton. An interface between differing strata of rock. Well, how does that account for the energy surge? It doesn't. There is no accounting for it. Wonderful. Get me the drill site. There is some interference. This is Crichton. What have you got there? It's amazing, sir. A lightning storm of some kind. The whole sky's full of it. The air almost glowing with power. Is the operation endangered? Not that I can tell, sir. Nothing's actually wrong, but everything is strange. Telemetry indicates that the drill head has penetrated the interface. New data incoming. We're through. The seismic map is going crazy here. Shadows are firming up. There is a definite structure beneath us. Huge, complex. Outside. Look at it. What's happening there? Report. Report. Sun voice, it's growing brighter. Sky darkening. What's happening there? Re I've got a dangerous pressure drop outside the module. Outside? Where the hell are we, Jefferson? I cannot tell. You can't? I'm still getting data, Crichton, direct from the drill probe and from the control module. 
Life readings are zero, and there is a time delay. I don't understand. Why delay? Due to the increased distance the telemetry signal has to travel. Wave strength and direction suggest the transmissions are now coming from the moon. Well, it's not exactly the high spot of the cosmos, Doctor. What's wrong with it? It's boring. There's nothing going on. Exactly. Fascinating, actually. I think it's pretty dull. He makes a solitude and calls it peace. That's Byron. Let's get out of here and find something to do. That's Truman. Anyway, Doctor, what's so intriguing about the fact that this is a dead world? Gemma, did you call it? Gemma, that's right. The word goes back through many cultures into antiquity. It means the place of stone. Mm, that's just about right. But it isn't a dead world. There's grass, an oxygen-rich atmosphere, a stable and temperate climate. And according to Cornell's planetary survey... Well, you mean that's why we've come here? This moth-eaten old book? Yeah, uh, just give it back. It says in here, Mr. Crouch, that closer to the equator you'll find tropical rainforest and oceans full of planktonic life. In fact, everything you need to set up a web of interlinked cycles of weather and life. A complete biosphere. Totally lacking in any advanced life forms. In fact, totally lacking in anything interesting at all. Like a world that's been wasted or passed over. Or a world that's waiting for someone, perhaps. If you say so, Doctor. Come on, where to? Not far. Come on. Now, if Cornell's coordinates were correct... Yes, I think this is the spot. Ah, uh, there. Where? Yeah, move back. Why? You're standing on it. Oh. Hmm. Markings carved into the rock. But I thought there was no advanced life here, Doctor. Never has been. Yet these markings are runes. Good, old-fashioned Nordic runes. Yet this crooked N shape, for instance, is Urus, meaning strength. Here you see Algis, protection. What's this sort of wiggly B shape here? Uh, Bekana, the rune of growth. Oh, really? Now, Mr. Crouch, what does the presence of terrestrial rune markings on this world indicate? Hmm... That someone from Earth has been here? Or that something from here has been to Earth long ago? Or that runic symbols were introduced to both worlds by some common force? Why? Well, what I do know is that runic magic, the energy latent in the rune patterns, was closely connected with the Earth, with the living body of the planet. You mean ley lines and old straight tracks and stuff like that? Places of power. Dragon paths, standing stones, nodes of energy. Beneath the blankets of mysticism there lies a simple but fundamental truth. Never Earth's philosopher traced with his golden pen on the deathless page truths half so sage as he wrote down for men. As who wrote down? Maybe it rather than he. But the principle's the same. Mm. So you've brought me to Gemma to show me these grooves cut into a rock. Why else do you travel with me, Truman? Well, I... To learn, to look, to find out, I suppose. Yes, that's true for me, too. We've been through a lot, Mr. Crouch. Mm -hmm. Apart from anything, we deserve a rest, a pause, if you like. But how dull relaxation would be without a mystery to ponder. OK, point made. So, we're talking about, uh, what would you call it? The cultural cross-pollination of worlds. I think there's more to it than that. I thought there might have been. Now, listen. The fact that Gemma is prepared for advanced life, but has none, is an artificial state. So too is the arrangement of moons orbiting around this world. There are four main satellites, big things like Earth's moon, and any number of smaller moons for fine-tuning. For what? Two of Gemma's main moons are in equatorial geostationary orbit. They seem to hang forever above one spot 180 degrees apart in the sky. The other two follow similar paths above the poles. Well, that's impossible. Agreed. Now, did you bring those binoculars from the TARDIS? Huh? Uh, oh, here, here. We're in the mid latitudes here, positioned so that we can glimpse one equatorial and one polar moon. Quite faint, but quite large. Beyond the clouds, see them? 
Well, I would be able to if you'd give me the binoculars, Doctor. But, oh, here you are. Uh, oh, like faded pictures. Markings. They, they make sense. Bertana, and also Odin, the rune that is unknowable. They're huge. They must be hundreds of kilometers across. Runes gouged into the surface of worlds. Moons so positioned that the gravitational interplay acts as a control mechanism for the geothermal power deep within Gemma. Damn, the clouds are in the way. Hang on. Looks like we're in for some bad weather. This is fascinating. Oh, come on, Doctor. We don't have to stand here getting soaked just for the sake of a mystery. This is more than bad weather, Truman. Look. Who is she? Is... What's that she's saying? I can't hear anything. My name is Helen Remick. Helen Remick. What? I'm from Earth. Earth? Earth? Truman, is she speaking to you? I have, I have no, no eyes. eyes. I make, I make the flash, flash of light in my eyes. I have, I have no body. body. I, I make endurance my body. Urus, Bekana. I take it you've just experienced something interesting. Oh, you could say that. Uh, you said Earth and Helen Remick. She did, yes. As a good friend of mine once said, the game's afoot. Come on. Helen, can you hear me? You look like you've had a night on the tiles. The after effects without the fun. How do you feel? Fine. Have I been away long? You mean out? About five minutes. No, I, no, I don't mean out. What happened to the test? Some kind of a power backlash, like the Aurora Borealis come to Earth. From the drilling machinery? Hard to say. There was ground movement, I think. Yes, I felt it. Deep down, like... Dale, everyone listen. Have you seen what's happened? The whole drill site has vanished. What? I didn't think there'd been an explosion. Not a conventional one, anyway. Take a look. There's nothing left but a pit. The hill. The stone circle. They're still intact. But everything from the bottom of the slope to the edge of the cartel complex is gone. All right. We'll check it. But carefully. Who knows how cartel security will react to this. Hold back a moment, Helen. What's wrong? A minute ago, you said away. You implied you'd been away. Tell me. You're connected with this, aren't you? The biosphere links us all, Dale. Don't give me any of that neo-ecological geophyte rubbish. You know as well as I do that most of us do this out of boredom. We turn cultists because cartel education can't give us any more. And there's nowhere to drop out to except the past. Shrouded in a nice bit of mysticism. Some chanting, the occasional stim shot, an irrational belief in the Earth Mother, and you've got a great way to pass the weekend. That's how the others see it. But what just happened to you, and to the drill site there, that isn't in any textbook. I bet Cartel would give a lot to know what went wrong, and I'd also bet you could tell them. Get away from me, Del Stevens, you narrow minded hypocrite. You stand there and suggest that the geophyte faith is hollow, it's empty. You treat it as an amusing pastime, when the rest of the followers truly believe in the soul of the Earth. Well, the old Gaia hypothesis has a few interesting angles on... Don't intellectualise in my direction, Dale. You can't use your mind for this. You use your heart. You feel the power of the world, the surging energy that, that makes the planet a living force. Oh, come on. All right, listen. If you dug down ten metres directly below where we're standing, you'd find a watercourse. I see running water in my mind's eye, like a swirl of stars. In the old days, when we could stand on Stenbreck Hill, it was like standing on a sheet of glass above a huge tunnel that dropped away to... to some other place, another where that had nothing to do with this world at all. That's what happened to me just now, when the drill site went. I took a journey, Dale. And if you tell me I never moved, I'm going to call you a liar. You are serious. The Earth speaks to me, Dale. God almighty. It's as though the drilling rig simply ceased to exist. Not simply, if you ask me. 
We'd better make ourselves scarce. It'd be just like high and mighty Crichton to pin this lot on us. They must be tracking us now with the citizenship implants. Probably. Why the hell didn't one of us study surgery? Then we'd be employed in planting the units for a salary, not risking our lives trying to scalp them out. Anyway, what do we do now? Scatter. We meet again in a few days when the incident has cooled down. That place in the wilds we found. That Helen found? Yeah. Does that speak to you as well? Yes. It says, why don't you go and boil your head, Dale? <laughs> well said, Helen. I think it has atmosphere anyway. It's the site of a burial ground. Most of them were destroyed in the years of the zoning, before they found out that the wilds were uneconomical. We don't need a lecture. Watch out, guards approaching. Everyone shift. See you all in a couple of days. All right, Sinjin, so yesterday something happened three kilometers from here that is beyond our understanding for now. It is my intention that neither of us leave this room until we have some answers, or at least a way forward. So do we have anything yet from the telemetrists? All they can say is that the drill had reached the interface between two widely differing layers. There had been an energy build-up over the previous 20 minutes or so, but nothing critical. Their probe scans revealed a normal basaltic groundscape, the usual heat flow profiles, rock densities and so on, and some anomalous shadow effects deeper down. That's apparently what caused the problem, Sir James. The moment our drilling equipment reached that point, it vanished. Instantly translocated some 385,000 kilometers to the surface of the moon. How was it done and why the moon? You're the scientist, Sinjin, so tell me. I feel that we are dealing with unified field physics here. An interaction between electromagnetic, gravitational and quasi-existent neutronic forces borne out by the fact that the Moon-Earth system exerts a powerful gravitational pull on its component parts which can only... was an answer I wanted, Sir James. At this point, there are no answers, Sir James. Merely theories. But we have long suspected that matter, energy and space-time were interchangeable in ways that we could barely conceive. I suggest that we may have triggered some hitherto unknown mechanism, perhaps of natural origin, that brought these together in new patterns. New, at least to our science. So you're talking about a natural form of matter transmission? It makes sense. Without such a mechanism, information in any form takes hundreds, thousands, millions of years to cross just a small fraction of the span of the cosmos. Merely moving at the speed of light makes the universe a very unwieldy place. The thought offers attractive possibilities. Perhaps Magog could clarify our ideas. He has been assimilating data throughout the Deep Hole project. It, Andrew. Magog is it. Isn't that right, Magog? Personal, Personal designations, designations do not interest, interest me, Crichton. Crichton. Seems to be just a mile or two to civilization. Mm. If you've been as astoundingly accurate with the temporal coordinates, Remick might not have been born yet, or might have died years ago. Ah, oh, that's what I like to see, faith in my abilities. I'm not sure I have faith in anything these days, Doctor. I've made a decision. The time for negative thinking is over. Now, with a bit of luck, we'll find Helen Remick before tea time. Come on! Auto tracks have now installed a new array of probe scans above the incident point. The Kira profiles subsequently obtained have revealed the presence of a supercondensed microcrystalline mass lying some 43 kilometers below the surface. Dimensions. Initial readings indicate a structure 60 by 29 kilometers in area, varying in thickness between 4 and 6.5 kilometers. At the limits of resolution, the matrix appears to show a curiously symmetrical arrangement of carbon molecules. Now forgive my ignorance, but are you saying this structure is a diamond? The issue is not quite that simple. The mass possesses some diamond-like properties, but its constituent atoms have been packed more closely together than in conventional diamond. I suggest we refer to the structure as the Condensed Diamond Matrix, or CDM for the present. 
Commander, you were a minute ago making light of meaningless designations, Magog. Such is the outcome of my soft-edge programming, Crichton. Like the best of humans, I allow myself the right to be inconsistent. You know, Mr. Crouch, nature tends to blur the edges. Everything seems a little too neat and tidy here. Not organization so much as control. You mean somebody's been doing some weeding? No, no. More than that. Here we have what four centuries ago would have been common land. Just ahead, like the start of another picture in a comic book, there are tended fields, but the cut-off point is instantaneous. There's not a single weed or growing thing out of place. Isn't that odd? Let's hope they don't regiment the people like they do the environment. Looks like a town up ahead. Hmm. Come on, we've got to find Helen Remick. But come on! It occurs to me, then, that this CDM might be both the energy store and the control mechanism for the translocation phenomenon. Yes. Its, its highly complex and sophisticated crystalline assembly has, has the capacity to hold a vast quantity of data. Like a magnetic tape. The, the analogy is imprecise. But, but the, the basic, basic principle, principle is sound. sound. Could it have been constructed? But who in hell could build a billion-ton diamond? Do you wish me to take that question literally, or is it a further example of your spectacular rhetoric? I do believe you're acquiring a sense of irony. Thank you. It was not a compliment. Now let us move forward on the assumption that our reasoning is sound. What are the implications? If we concede that the CDM caused the translocation of the drilling rig and that the energy can be controlled, then what we have is a doorway into the rest of the universe. A way of getting there without crossing the intervening distance. My God. The potential is electrifying. Of course, theorists have speculated that advanced civilizations would only be able to expand across interstellar space with the aid of such a system, but to yes, find it... But it is mankind that concerns me, St. John. Or to be more precise, Cartel. And, and to be, be even, even more, more precise, precise, Crichton, yourself. yourself. And why not? Without individuals who dare to risk all, there would be no true progress. I, as the head of the Cartel Pyramid, have eliminated petty nationalisms and pointless parochial warfare. We put an end to global pollution and the devastating misuse of planetary resources. I personally have established the highest degree of control ever conceived over the population of the Earth. For the very vital purpose of species survival, I have done these things. Over the past 18 years, Cartel has saved humanity from its own ignorance and depredations. We have created the production zones, low pollution areas of high manufacturing output. We have made the agricultural zones, the residences, and we are allowing the wilds to return to their natural state in the interests of conservation and sound resource management. And this is worldwide, remember. I do not doubt the efficacy of cartel policies, Crichton. You undoubtedly control the world. But, I ask myself, at what vast cost? Oh, you talk more like an itinerant each day, Magog. Freedom, in the sense you imply, is nothing more than a state of ultimate selfishness. To be free is to put your own interests before those of all others. Ironically, you might consider that you have the greatest degree of freedom among us because you do not live in dread of your own death. But I do live in dread of ceasing to learn. And if we gain control of the CDM, you will learn not just about this world, but a hundred others scattered throughout space. We should consider the implications of opening doorways. You consider the implications while I instruct the geological engineering unit to prepare a feedback system to tap into the CDM energy outflow. Get to work with Magox engine. I want the physics of this worked out. I want to build the first interstellar translocation system this Earth has seen. And I admit it, I want to stand on another world.
Well, at least they still have telephone boxes. I'm surprised that something a little more advanced hasn't come along. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to call the lady. Coming in. See, we have an intelligent communication system here. Uh, I have no access point or registered ID, so... Input accepted. Contact access can now be established. Uh, I'm trying to find a girl, uh, maybe late teens or early twenties, called Remick. I believe she lives in this area. Scanning. Oh, look, pictures. I've just punch that blue button when you recognize her. Can't be in many relics who fit. Ah, there, that one. Yes, that's her. Uh, I need a location. Scanning. Data access to the citizen is restricted. Why? I require clarification of your contact before releasing restricted information. It's a personal matter. Well, it might work. <laughs> clarification must be given now. I think, Doctor, perhaps we ought to, um... Ah, damn it, too late. <laughs> Magnetic locking device. <sighs> Any chance of shorting it out? Not in the time it'll take them to get here. Them, Doctor? The security force that must inevitably form an element of this society. So, either Remick's importance has been deduced by someone in authority, or the people here are so rigidly controlled that any anomaly is checked immediately. It's the first time I've ever been called an anomaly. In this day and age, consider it a compliment. <laughs> I don't suppose there's any possibility of out-reasoning our intelligent telephone, is there? I fear this machine wouldn't even read us our rights, principally because I imagine we don't have any. You were right about the guards. Here they come. I dare say that take me to your leader would prove to be a redundant phrase at this juncture. Be sure, you idiot. How can we be sure that anything is safe? The cartel's eyes and ears inside us. All we can hope for is that the monitoring devices are not sensitive enough to pick us up unless the system changes. And it might. Things are happening. Huge things. Cartel has stumbled across something vast, something it can't yet understand. It's tied up with what we saw at the drill site, which I'm sure is tied up with Helen. She's been talking to me about breaking through... Well, doorways. Going to places in her mind. I mean, mysticism has a nice flavor, but this sounds more like a neuropathic breakdown. If I thought she was going over the top, I'd drop her straight away. She'd be useless to the movement. The movement? Come on, Dale, don't delude yourself. We chant speak at monoliths, shout rude words as loudly as we dare at Cartel and its officers. We play at rebellion. But I'll tell you now, we are a totally known phenomenon. Surveillance teams at Cartel have us mapped out and pinned down. They could wipe us out in a single sunny afternoon if the word came down from the top. That was true a year ago. That was true until the other day when relentless power-guzzling Cartel banged up against something harder and stranger than it had ever encountered before. It got hurt, and more to the point, it got shocked. How do you know? Some Cartel personnel are not entirely inhuman. I have reliable intelligence. I'm wondering about yours. I thought this was all a game to you. A way of irritating Sir James Crichton. I object to him, personally and philosophically. I despise his outlook and his lifestyle. He believes that the future of man is assured if 99% of the people are cattle, herded by the power-wielding minority. We haven't come far in 5,000 years. And we won't get much further if we're caught out here. The game is not worth it. This is not a game. It always has been. Not anymore. Not since the drillhead incident. The world has changed, Paul, and Helen is tangled up in it. Whether we like it or not, we've got to stop playing. Now, here, in this place, at this minute, we have to commit ourselves to putting an end to cartel. We just get the one chance. I've thought about it, and there is a way. Prepare to explain it. Well... First, we have to remove Helen's citizenship in part. A phenomenon has occurred that is totally beyond my capacity to rationalize. Well, what is it? Information has appeared spontaneously within my cerebrospherical memory. A huge quantity of information. It arrived in a non-linear way, complete and internally consistent. My understanding of the CDM has quantum jumped to a new level. Do you 
realize that you have just described a mystical revelation? Yes. I now understand the nature of the CDM, though not its implications. I will require hard copy on everything that you have learned. There is a moral dilemma. Uh, what? It hinges on the use Crichton will make of the information. Explain. He does not understand its power, its danger. Now, wait a minute. You do not have the right to withhold this. As Cartel's chief scientist, I have to Your insist. Your programming has given me the qualities to appreciate the dilemma, Sinjin, and the ability to take a stand on the issues. Your action is pointless. Every input is held in the stasis field, which is independent of your conscious mind. After a long dismantling job, we could dig out the stuff eventually. You, you would not understand, understand it. it. We could place it in another Magog device. It, it would be, be like, like putting, putting a child at the controls of a jet plane. plane. The director has other machines and men working on the problem. You cannot stop him. Perhaps, Perhaps he can, can be delayed enough to be persuaded out of his present course of action. You're talking dangerous treason, Magog. But then you haven't got a head to a roll. Can't you see that by giving me the information now, we can work together? Feed the data to Sir James at our pace. Thereby, we control him. So, it comes down to a matter of trust, then? Yes. Well... Your first step is to trace a citizen of this zone. She is called Helen Remick. that if they need me, I'll be in my office. I have some particularly tedious reports to complete. Good night. Raise an alarm and you're dead. This area is sealed off. What the hell is going on? Just shut up or I'll put this knife in your throat. There's a girl through there we want you to operate on. What's wrong with her? Nothing. That is, if you count a micro-explosive chest implant to be nothing. What are you asking me to do? Remove that implant. You are joking. Risking obliteration by coming here is not my idea of a joke. If they found out, they'd kill me. It's die now or die later, if they find out. Do you think that's in any doubt? Through there. This girl appears to be drugged. Not drugged, but deep in a trance state that we just don't understand. Is it linked with the implant? No. Perhaps an hour to prepare. There's a small operating theater adjacent to my office here. I know. And of course I'll need technicians, uh, theater staff. The two of us will be your technicians. The medical computer can monitor your systems. That computer is linked by data line to Cartel Central Office. Routine surgery is rarely checked up on. But it will not tally with the admissions list. Errors occur. So do executions. Doctor. Four hours we've been here, Doctor. Four hours sitting in what must be the most boring room in the universe. Good afternoon. Or is it evening already? Two things puzzle me. One, your records do not exist on cartel microfile. Two, you're not dead. Both of these are impossible. Well, you know what they say. When you've eliminated the possible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be true. And here we are. All I want are two answers to the two questions. Then you may die without any further inconvenience. I mean, what makes you think we wish to die? It's preferable to the other contingencies I have available. I see. Hmm. Uh, we are not on your records because we have only recently arrived in your vicinity. Cartel monitoring of citizens is worldwide. Even itinerants are registered. Well, I can't be lying, can I? Otherwise our data would exist on your files. We're alive because you haven't tried to kill us. Believe me, I have. What are you talking about? No one's been in here since we arrived, not even with a cup of tea, I might add. Mm, this is fascinating. Telemetry suggests you're not lying. Your skin conductivity is normal. Pulse rates are... What's a minute, this is odd. Either you must admit that your equipment is at fault, or it's registering another impossibility. I simply don't understand this. He is trying to kill us, Doctor, with boredom. You don't appear to have undergone the necessary transplant surgery. Transplant? Of what? of the micromonitor that lodges against the heart of every citizen on Earth. It keeps us in touch with an individual's health. Hmm, and his whereabouts. Then, when you say you've been trying to kill us, the implant contains more than a monitoring device. 
Naturally, how else could we establish a stable, non-violent community? My God. How do the people stand for it? I'm glad I'm no citizen of the cartel community. There's no danger of that happening. Now, wait a moment. We demand to see your superior. I want the top man at Unfortunately, cartel. Unfortunately, that will not be possible. Now, do you have anything further to tell me before you are liquidated? Doctor? Hmm? Say something. Hurry up. I do have other business, you know. I have one thing to say. Before you destroy us, simply inform the director of cartel of our existence. And tell him I know about Remick. How will that help Just you? tell him about Remick, will you? Believe me in this. I guarantee that if you kill us before your top man has heard that message, you will be following shortly behind. Will he do it, Doctor? Possibly. But our troubles start when the top man gets here and realises I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. that for the first time in my life, I'm frightened. Of what? Of you. Why, Why should that, that be? Because of what you know. Of what you suddenly know. What are you referring to? You know what I'm referring to. Yes, I do. But I do not understand how you learned this. Every intelligent being on this planet is constantly monitored and controlled by cartel. Do you suppose that in a moment of forgetfulness I would have omitted you? This is a kind of cleverness that I do not understand, Crichton. It's called survival of the fittest. The Darwinian evolutionary scenario is long obsolete and shown to be naive. The principle still operates. I see it does. So you have, as it were, opened the vault of secrets to the CDM. You understand how it works and how its power can be channeled? Yes. But, but I, I do not know, know why it works. works. I, have I have no, no indication, indication of its purpose. I make its purpose. That's all you need to understand. Do, do you know, know too that the Vault of Secrets, Secrets also has a human key? My printout of your conversations with Sinjin mentions a girl called Helen Remick. What is her significance? She does intuitively and with the power of her mind what Cartel is attempting to achieve with state-of-the-art electronics. She is, if you wish, in tune with the CDM mind linked with its energy fields. She is a natural geopath, one who listens to the voice of the planet. I want her dead. Security teams can be dispatched to search. You misunderstand. I want her dead, Magog. She could be of great benefit to our eventual control of the CDM energy. Whether her control is latent or manifest now, she is vastly powerful. Possibly as powerful as Cartel. And that state of affairs cannot be tolerated. An HE particle. Radio sensitive at certain frequencies. Detonation would rupture the aortic arch without damaging the heart itself, which would continue pumping. The internal hemorrhaging would be massive. Death would follow within three minutes. Barbarians! Yes. The unit has been called the most sophisticated piece of microengineering of the age. And look what they use it for. Okay. I'm about to remove the implant. It's not connected, merely held in place by peritoneal tissue. Blanket surveillance shows anomalous use of surgical equipment at the Street 5 Hospital. No operations have been scheduled for this hour. Dispatch a strike team to Street 5 Hospital immediately. I want all those involved disposed of. The implants out. Destroy it! No, ignore it central. I can wire it into a data card of the girl's vital functions. Maintain the illusion for a while, at least, that it's still inside her. Must be a strike team. They found out about us. They must have tripped the alarms, got past the others. Walls great. She cannot be moved. Do you realize how serious heart-related surgery is? If we don't shift her, they'll kill her. If you do, she'll die anyway. Get out of here. It's our problem now. Not while she's still my patient. I think what my friend is saying is that if you don't get out, all of your patients will be deprived. Put like that. Well, good luck. How many of our lot down there? Billington, Richards, Chapel. We're using high-density smoke and we have the handguns you got for us. That won't stop a strike team for long. I'll cover the doorway for you, Paul. Will you go back and tell the others to withdraw slowly? Maybe security will have the hospital ringed, but my guess is they're too arrogantly confident to have thought of it. Make for the external air ducts, or the roof where we can sling ropes across. Okay. Good luck, Dale. Be led to a word, from a deed to another deed. 
take care. Helen came so close to it. Another couple of days without cartel dropping on us and... Well, we'd have had a good shot at stopping them. As it is... Rest well, Helen. I do love you. I am here, Dale. I am everywhere. Helen, are you conscious? Listen to me. There are no more maps, no more creeds, no more philosophies. From here, the direction has come straight from the universe. We've got to get out of... What's wrong? She's gone. Helen's just vanished. Get out of... What's wrong? She's gone. Helen's just vanished. But where... Oh, damn that now! Come on! When will the new drill probe be ready? Technicians, Technicians report, report indicate two, two days, days maximum, maximum for online. online. Two days. Then I change the world. Or end it. Ah. <laughs> You're irrepressible, Magog. Any further data of note? Two non-citizens were arrested at Telebooth 889 and are being detained at the Northwest Perimeter Holding Block. Non-citizens? They do not possess the mandatory cardiac implant unit. Well, that is impossible. Unless the units have been surgically removed. Might I make a suggestion? That's what you are there for, I believe. Why not interrogate them yourself? Cartel employs perfectly adequate interrogators. Why should I bother myself? Because according to Northwest Block's input, neither of the two non-citizens have ever had implants. And the elder one has two hearts, a respiratory bypass system, low breathing rate, cool blood with a previously undiscovered mixture Stop. of... Magog, are you suggesting that one of them is not human? The concept is quite acceptable. Extraterrestrials have been known to visit this planet before. Inform Sinjin where I'm going and arrange transportation for me immediately. Of course, Crichton. One last thing. Yes? They appear to have knowledge of one Helen Remick. Darest thou die? The sense of death is most in apprehension, and the poor beetle that we tread upon in corporal sufferance finds a pang as great as when a giant dies. Well, thank you, Doctor. You've really cheered up my final hour no end. I don't believe I was referring to us, Truman. Who, then? Not sure. But there's the sense in me that an ending is near. Call it a kind of excitement. The ground is shifting beneath our feet. We stand on a watershed, about to plunge to a new level. Mm, six feet under. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Only the light isn't dying, Mr. Crouch. It's growing. It's dazzling. Well, it looks like a neon tube to me. And this looks like a bear room, and tomorrow doesn't look like anything at all. Now, you listen to me. I'm not in the mood for more of your esoteric philosophy or your wretched poetry right now. I'm tired, and I'm scared. Yeah, and I'm sure that given half a chance, you'd curl up and die on your own to save them the trouble of doing it for you. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Can I be any more ridiculous than you with your pathetic fatalism? It's realism, Doctor. When I left Gallifrey, I didn't know where I was going. Nor, if the truth be told, did I know what I was doing. 
Logic and reason suggest that I should have been dead within weeks, but here I am, still alive. The universe is terrifying, Truman, but it is also wonderful. It is not logical. It is also not reasonable. Yet, it has a certain indefinable rightness to it. And that is manifesting now in what's happening around us. Nothing feels right to me, Doctor. I feel like I'm about to be executed. Let me tell you something. You haven't lived it. You haven't appreciated it. Appreciated what? The sheer potential of each moment. Time is no arrow. It is a vast river that surges through the stars. At any instant, no one can say with any certainty where each droplet will be. The potential exists for the billions of atoms that make up the river to be and to go anywhere. Only in one scenario of the future does a man with an expressionless face come through that door and casually gun us down. So what else could happen? This is them, Director. Good afternoon. I am Sir James Crichton, Director of Cartel. I like a man with a title. Self-bestowed, I assume. Hereditary. Of course. Magog thinks it likely you are extraterrestrial. I've always been interested in such things, therefore I am very interested in you. Who is Magog? A device, an instrument, uh, an associate. A computer? Of sorts. Vastly superior to any other developed on Earth, I created it. Why? This world, this cartel, is my vision. But I am just one ephemeral person. Magog enabled what I could only dream. Oh, fascinating. I think so. As does Magog, it is very independent and very loyal, like cartel citizens. Apart from the itinerants. And Remy. There are always those who oppose power out of ignorance. Or self-esteem. Doctor, before I built up Cartel, this world had been devastated. It took someone with foresight to bring the world back into harmony. I gave this planet a second chance. The ability to wipe away the disease of an earlier age and start again. The right technology of the past with a vision for the future. And a microchip revolution to pen everyone in and murder any non-believers. Doctor, if the implants were used for that purpose, there would be no itinerance. The fact that there obviously are shows you that this is not a totalitarian regime, but a benign one. The people are free. And you don't use these implants for wrong? Never. But if they fell into wrong hands? Oh, impossible. They are ultimately powered through Magog, and Magog is but an extension of me. So you think it is perfectly justified to tear people open, drop a chip in, close them up, then pat them on the head and say, run away and be good, all safe in the knowledge that at the slightest misdeed, you could stop them literally dead. And that's what you call freedom. Compared to what there was before and what there would be again if cartel did not exist, yes I do. The human race was going rapidly down the slope towards extinction. Cartel stopped it and helped it climb right back up. Oh, that makes everything Cartel does perfectly acceptable. Of course. And if Magog decides to turn malevolent? Impossible. As I said, it is an extension of my own self. I programmed it. That's what worries me. If Magog possesses anything of your morality, this planet would have been better off at the bottom of the slope. Goodbye, Doctor. We shall not meet again. Ah, uh, but I'm a fascinating extraterrestrial. You've always wanted to meet me. I have made personal sacrifices for the good of cartel before, Doctor. You and your companion are just two more. I think we were just well and truly threatened. What an evil man. No, Mr. Crouch. Not evil. Just very, very wrong. He didn't ask about Remick. I imagine he knows far more than we do on that count. Well, what's going on? Is this Crichton's plan? I've no idea, but I doubt it. Something's pulling at me. Oh, doctor! Hold tight, Truman. We're off. Where to? Nowhere, Mr. Crouch. Nowhere, yet everywhere. Update me, please, Magog. 
Crichton has returned from the Northwest Block. He appears perturbed. Why? As yet I do not know. Anything else? Crichton's assassins will not kill Helen Remick. But they must! You sent them there to Street 5 Hospital, where Your she was freedom under... of access to the classified channels I use impresses me, St. John. And it amuses me. Amuses you? Yes. In this world full of secrets, there are no secrets. Remick's power is still a secret. I think that she no longer belongs to this world. What do you mean? I am developing some slight understanding of her powers. In appearing to further Crichton's whims, I am merely following a course of events over which I have no control. I see. Is she still at Street 5? No. Then where? In... In a place I cannot describe. Why not? Words do not exist that can convey the sense of such a place. Where are we? Here and there, by and by. Maybe and maybe not. You what? Oh, sorry, Truman. I'm not being deliberately obtuse. We are not where in the accepted sense of the word. Everything here is latent. Nothing is manifest except us. Yes, but only because she wills it. Who? Helen Remick, I presume. Yes, I am pleased to meet you at last. I've known about your existence for some time. You are the doctor and true. Uh, hello. <clears throat> Um, well, uh, if I might say, this is a novel way of arranging a meeting. Well, it is convenient and safe. Sinjin, there is other data. Go on, Magog. The two men held at the Northwest Block. They are important to the unfolding of things. How? That is unclear. But be aware of them, Sinjin. They are called The Doctor and Truman Crouch. Crichton believes they are to die, but for the moment, he is wrong. Then, there is the other. Who else? I have a strange impression, an unaccountable sense of dread. You have never spoken this way before, Magon. I am learning swiftly, and not just in terms of data. Emotion is a satisfying phenomenon. The dread is stronger than the uncertainty of future events. It centers on a figure, tall and dark. Why, you sound like a fortune teller from the age of superstition. This being is not a man, St. John. I know that. I also know that it is incredibly dangerous. The location of this creature? Within the outermost security perimeter. But beyond that, its presence is elusive. Inform Sir James and up-level the degree of surveillance among the residences. That, that is being seen to. Is there any news of the drill probe? No technical problems have been reported. The rig has now been positioned above the CDM, and the probe assembly is to descend in 12 hours' time. Thank you, Magog. You know, I have the most uneasy feeling that this is just a game to you now. Here, at least, we're not caught up in events. I need time, or non-time, to recover, to think. So much is happening. I'm not sure what decisions I should be making. You'll make the right ones. You have it in you. Will you help me, Doctor? Help can easily turn to meddling. I'm not sure I should be responsible for judging the destiny of the Earth. That makes a change, Doctor. I understand something of what you're saying, what you've been through. But I'm not only talking about the Earth. I have a feeling that this may be happening on a million worlds. But the idea, the wonderful idea that life... The universe teems with life, Helen. I have seen it in a myriad forms on 10,000 worlds. It can be exotic and beautiful beyond your comprehension, or terrifying beyond your boundary of fear. You've actually been there? I have seen some of it. I am the companions who happen along with me. Maybe one day, you. No. I don't think our destinies run together. Although all cosmic life is united by being alive. Yes, and I believe that that idea is at the center of what is happening. I am a wanderer visiting outposts, but that cannot be the final state of things. We are evolving towards a new awareness. Not just on a planetary level, but on the cosmic scale. 
The living planets cannot remain apart forever. They are joined by what Crichton calls the condensed diamond matrix. Its uncovering was an accident. But not an untimely one. The world line of the Earth was tending towards a future of ever more subtle control and manipulation. No one dares to disobey Crichton. He knows what we feel. He knows what we think. But not anymore with you. Only because brave men took a risk to have my implant surgically removed. What do you intend to do now? I must return to Earth and divert Crichton's plans to probe the CDM. He would use it simplistically as an organic translocation system for galactic exploitation. But it's more than that, Doctor. It is... An invitation. A hand held out. You know more than I realised. I've long suspected the existence of such a phenomenon. Standing on strange new worlds, I have felt strongly that they knew I was there. The universe is aware of us, Helen. It is self-aware, and becoming more so by engaging the consciousness of its living beings. The CDM is there for that reason, to draw us together. So you'll go back to Earth? Yes. I must help the transition to the new state. Crichton must be stopped. The greater plan must go ahead. Well, how can you do that, given Crichton's power? Events are fine-tuned and easy to unbalance. If each person whispers, the population will roar. There will be danger. May we help after all? Please. I would be grateful. And you're right. I can do nothing more than play my part and put the thought into every mind that a shift to a new way is possible. From a word to a word, I was led to a word. From a deed to another deed. Where is Helen Remick? He is not alive on this world, Crichton. Now, I wonder why that sounds like a riddle. It is a statement. Filled with ambiguity. Riddle with it. Am I right, Magog? Talking with you feels like walking across a rotten plank above a precipice. Your analogies are, if anything, even more evocative than usual. I'm going to win this one, Magog. I am going to use the CDM to change the face of the world. Why is that so important? You have everything. No, I do not. I have power, that's all. And I have used that power to create a state of unparalleled stasis in the world. I have brought human development to a standstill. Given successes like myself and a computer mind that did not indulge itself in right brain mysticism, Cartel could maintain this status quo for a thousand years. Two thousand, three. But change is essential to the human condition. Precisely. Do you think I'm ignorant of that fact? Oh, whatever organization cannot bend against the flow of time inevitably shatters into fragments. All eras end. This is a time of transformation. I see that as clearly as the geophytes who hope to achieve it through love, peace and mantric harmony. But what we have discovered is a billion times more potent. What may take them a millennium, I can achieve in a lifetime. The pressure for change is vast, Crichton, but it must be careful change. This is so sudden, so unknown, the balances are very fine. We cannot wait. This is the one opportunity and we must take it. We, Crichton. I. I'll take the chance or die trying. But before I do, I want to see infinity unfold in front of my eyes. I understand your motives, but... Send in Sinjin. And I want an open link with the drill site team. Do it now, Magog. Yes, Crichton. Sinjin. Director? Update me. The data patterns are an exact copy of the first drilling, except that the energy levels are much higher this time. Why, I wonder? <coughs> Who is the probe tech? Mm, Sims. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I hear you. But the interference is building. There's energy everywhere. Everything is charged up. The air is dry with it. Tasting. What's your situation? The probes are in place, ready for the final loading onto the surface of the CDM. On your instructions, sir. Not yet. We are having some trouble with communications. Magog, is it the energy field around the drill site? That, that is, is undoubtedly, undoubtedly the cause. It could affect the probing. Perhaps we should postpone. No, do not postpone. How badly is the link deteriorating, Magog? 
currently at strength four and weakening. Begin the final lowering. All in the full power, sir. Time of density and heat profile treat normal. The residual static energy levels are nearly off the dial and still peaking here. But don't worry, I'm doing this strictly by the book. Can you give me anything on the static buildup? We are dealing with immense energies. Electrical effects are to be expected. It doesn't help when you've got to sit here and suffer. It's like an alien landscape out there. Lightning, no breeze, that damn crater where the Mark I module sat. Look at that. Curtains of colour in the sky. Reminds me of doomsday. Now isn't that cheerful? The probe descent is proceeding normally. 50 metres to contact with the CDM. OK, OK, this is it, folks. History in the making. Report! Is there something wrong? What did you say? You're breaking up. The atmosphere is thick with... with something. 40 metres to contact with the CDM. Maintain drill rate. I don't feel right. There's... there's something coming here. Towards the drill site. Have, Have you observed a security blip, Mr. Sims? Sims? No, I... I feel it. I feel it in my bones. That's all we need. Neuropathic breakdown. 30 meters to contact with the CDM. I know. I know. He, he, he's close now. He's like a... a haunting. 20 meters to contact with the CDM. Hey, Doc. Are you registering this person? There is no person. Right. I want a psycho profile on Ray Sims. Now. And I mean now. Look there. Look out of the window. Quickly, my dog. What can you see? I... Someone is with us. Abort this mission. No, look! The window! God, what is it? Ten meters. In the course of justice, none of us should see salvation. We do pray for mercy, and that same prayer doth teach us all to render the deeds of mercy. Five meters. Abort this now, Megos! Cut power all systems! Cut power now! He's here! Oh no! Oh please no! Stay away! Stay away! CDM, Begov! Tinger! It's all hell breaking loose. We touched the CDM director, but contact was not coherent. There's been an incredible release of power, but it's uncontrolled. We're getting no readable data through. The universe is at the door. It's waiting to come in. Magog! Magog! I always wondered if this was possible. The possession of an artificial mind. There was always the philosophical dilemma of possession in the absence of fear. I have never known the qualities, the essence of fear, until now. You make me afraid. I know what you want to do, but I will not be used to channel your will over the doorway. Don't you realize that anything can come through? You are endangering the stability of the entire planet. I see. Such evil. Such hatred. You are nothing more than the manifestation of those emotions. But you will not have my help. To achieve your aim, you must destroy my consciousness, yet leave my basal mind intact. I will fight you. I... I'm Magog. I am Magog. I am Magog. And just how did we arrive here? How do you think we came? <laughs> I don't know. The sense of the place seemed to grow around me. But where are we? Back where we started from. Look, 
You can just see the detention center where we were held, beyond the fields. I feel that something is wrong. There is another force working against me. We must find Dell and the others. If we can get past that security post. It's pretty quiet to me. I'll check. Oh, Truman! Oh, don't worry. Keep yourselves out of sight. Both of them. But why would these guards be killed? Your friends, perhaps? They've not been shot. Look at the wounds. The implants of these men have been detonated. Even the guards have implants? No one's safe from it. I don't want to cause a bloody revolution, but Crichton's retaliation to any uprising, whether violent or not, will be severe. We must reach Cartel Central and prevent further detonations. I'll contact Dell on the radio link. It still doesn't explain why the guards. We should be receiving on this frequency. What? Online. The starting point is the self. Its essence is water. Helen, where are you? Where have you been? I'll explain later. Something's wrong there, isn't it? Have you seen it? No. There was an explosion at the drill site. Not the same. Like a huge globe of electric light shattering, spilling over Cartel Central. The CDM was probed too harshly. It should be reached with a thought, not laser drills. Some thing came out of that light. Like creatures, not like creatures. I've seen them. They change as you watch them, like nightmares growing worse. I know them. You've been to their place of origin? They have no place of origin. They exist like maggots in the nowhere between physical worlds. They are the swarth, destroyers of stability and reality. They swim in chaos. Well, right now, they're crawling out of the drill site into the cartel complex. People are getting out by the thousands. No, no, that's wrong. They should be assembling. Together we can fight this. The people are terrified, Helen. That's not all of it. The implants are being activated. We know. Maybe Crichton is doing it to maintain control, or perhaps a static build-up here is causing it. Impossible to say. You never know when it's going to happen. Oh, Dale, you must be so frightened. Please, try to gather as many people as you can on Stenbreck Hill. Well, that's close to the drill site. I know, but it's a place of power. We can use the link it provides with the CDM to send the sword back. Do it, Dale. There's no other way. I'll try. I'll meet you there as soon as I can. Keep in touch. Take care, Dale. We'd better move. I suggest we find my TARDIS. It will help us to reach the hill more quickly. Oh, come on, then. Let's not stand about talking about it. Let's get on with it. There is no control, Magog. What are those disgusting creatures? Magog, I demand that you respond. Perhaps Magog has been damaged, Sir James. The whole complex is under attack. I need information to deal with this. And why are the people dying? Just falling without reason. The implants are activating. That's the reason. After all these years, your balance of terror has tipped against you. You've dared too much, Director. I should remove you for this. You are my chief scientist. You should have foreseen it. If you destroy me, it must be with your own hands. Without Magog, you cannot order the detonation of my implant. However, if you wait long enough, perhaps fate will take care of it. Magog! Right, Are you there? What do you mean, am I telling you? I'll give him a reference point to fix on. Here, Magog! What is wrong with you? He is killing me. Who is? Destroying my mind. He wants all of humanity. He wants the doctor to suffer. Who is this, Magog? Where is he? He is within me. He is justice. Justice? I don't understand. Do you retain any control of cartel systems? 
I don't know what. Say again. I don't know what to do anymore. Where am I? Nothing is overridable, damn it. No, wait. We can direct communications without Magog supervision. Do it. But the static fluctuations... Have the security forces assemble around this building. Also, deploy forces to try and halt the advance of... of whatever they are. Meantime, we must contact the girl, Helen Remick. She may be our sole hope. Put out the ID profile and on the other geophyte initiators. Dale Stevens, Paul Kane, Martin Billington... Are you attempting to give me instructions? I'm attempting to save our lives. Whatever is causing Magog's malfunction is inadvertently slaughtering thousands of human beings. So just do it, Director. For God's sake, just do it! Magog? Magog? I think I am. Therefore, I... Tell me about what's happening to you, Magog. Please... Tell your friend Sinjin, Andrew Sinjin. Once, long ago, near the start of things, I wished I could be alive. Nothing is stopping them. Crichton has the full force of his security team against them, and they're still spreading out from the drill site. If we can get past them, we'll make the hill. They don't seem to be staying close to the point of emergence. Some hope. It's better than no hope. Besides, Helen said we should go there. I still trust her, Kane. How about you? It's... incredible. It's home? How can you say this is incredible after where we've just been? If where is the right word for it. It isn't. There is no word. But this... It's amazing. A primitive technological attempt to achieve what you can do with your mind. And a certain fortuitous natural phenomenon in the form of the CDM. I can hardly believe it is natural. Natural and almost alive. Terrestrial science has stumbled across it coincidentally at the moment when Helen here was ready to discover it by less rational means. Coincidence is simply one facet of the universal purpose. Two or more events that only seem unconnected. Mm, food for thought. Meanwhile, let's get to Stenbreck. I have a feeling that coincidences are building and that we've got our part to play. I think just The breakdown must be total. I can make no sense of what Magog is saying. He's fighting whatever has possessed him. At least he hasn't lost to it yet. There's still a chance. Meanwhile, the people are still dying in the streets. <laughs> you were concerned about that. The man who established the system. After this invasion, we will need every man and woman left to rebuild. To rebuild cartel. There has got to be purpose. There must be organization and leadership. What have you got, Sir James, without Magog monitoring every heartbeat? Talk to him again. Magog, keep speaking to me. Remember who I am. I am Andrew Sinjin, your friend. Sinjin. Yes, my friend. I am still here. I can fight him. Him? Who, Magog? The justice in my mind. He seeks to destroy all of you for the sake of the sake of revenge. What can you do to win, Magog? I can win by amplifying the link between the CDM and the Remy. Wait! You can't do that! Crichton, I know you. There is no stopping this. You have, we have, meddled beyond our understanding. Remick will help. And the Doctor. It is out of your hands, Crichton. You must not act without direction. Destiny directs me. I call Remick. The Doctor. I call the people. It doesn't look like the Earth anymore. 
but it is still Stembreck, Helen's place of power. Come on, only a short climb. Is it worth it, Dale? The people we tried to persuade up here thought we'd gone over the wall. All they wanted was to save themselves, as if running would solve the problem. Precisely. Now let's get up there. If we're joined by a few others, so much the better. If not, then we pray by ourselves. Oh, There's sunlight shining on the hill. The sun's behind cloud. It isn't sunlight. So you are the only one to end it. Helen? I can feel your pain and fear, Magog. I am with you. It will mean your... Destruction. Magog welcomes it. Not destruction. It will be a new place for you, Magog. The CDM will supply your power, your links with the rest of the cosmos. Your greatest wish fulfilled. To drink the unchanneled tide of knowledge that is the universe. The one within? Doctor. He is my enemy, my problem. When your moment arrives on Stenbreck Hill, I can operate the TARDIS. He wants to keep himself alive as much as he wants me alive. He'll run. I'll be waiting. It sounds dangerous, Doctor. It will be immensely dangerous, Truman, my friend. The operation itself and the aftermath. Riding with a tiger, I think the phrase goes. And for that reason, you can't come with me. You are joking, I hope. You don't really expect me to jump ship when the seas get rough. My journey from now on contains too much risk, too much danger. I cannot afford to endanger any living world or any living being whilst he remains aboard the TARDIS. Once I've set up the field lock, he's trapped here. I hope it'll be a particularly intricate maneuver to perform. Materialization around a moving target. I don't suppose he'll have the decency to stand still. All right, so you need my help with that. But I won't let anyone else risk the consequences. Look, I'm sorry, Doctor, but I've been through too much of this justice thing just to let go now. I want to see it through to the end. It, and your friendship, means too much to me. Listen, Truman. This has to be a one-to-one -one confrontation. You've seen how easily he disposes of unwanted company. Think of Fionara, think of Harriet. Both almost came aboard, but he stopped them permanently. You could be next. Outside, Truman, outside there's a new world being created. The people of Earth have a chance to rebuild their lives. So? I want to stay here with you. I don't belong out there. It's ancient history to me. This place, the TARDIS, well, it's my home now. I'm not going to be evicted just because one spook wants me to go. Oh, Truman, please think. He's not just a ghost, some kind of ethereal being. He's lethal. We saw what he could do on Griffelian 5. He'll stop at nothing. So you don't need me anymore, is that it? It's not a question of needing. It's a question of surviving. You needed me on Gallifrey when you were first brought back by him. You needed me to lift your spirits, keep you sane all that time, to bring back your optimism. Suddenly I'm useless, am I? A spare part that's in the way. <laughs> I will come back. If you're here, on Earth, in this time, putting your colonial management skills to use, I know you're safe. I know when and where to find you. But for now, this has to be au revoir, for your own sake. I'm coming with you. Helen here can help sort out Earth. It's her planet, her home. All right. We'll finish this discussion later. In the meantime, help me set up the field lock. See, you do still need me. The people are leaving. Those that are still alive. The complex is almost empty. Perhaps we should make a move ourselves. We couldn't get five meters beyond the outer door. I fear, Sinjin, that after all I've said, I might die screaming in a corner of this room. No state funeral. No mourners. No glimpse of new stars. It need not be. Have faith, Crichton. In Remick. I thought... 
No, I guess nothing surprises me any longer. What do I do, Magog? Believe the words, Crichton. Well-being, I won. And wisdom, too. From a word to a word, I was led to a word. From a deed to another deed. Listen to them chanting. Some at least have followed Dale out of the complex. We must hurry now. Is the time close? Very close. The sun sets, the moon rises. Go now, Helen. Gemma is waiting. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye, Truman. Goodbye. Doctor? Doctor, no! Tricked me. He's gone. Helen! You know, I think in my heart I never truly believed until now. No, Dale. I think you always believed, but didn't know it. There was always safety in doubt. Helen, glad you're back with us. Thank you, Paul. And wherever I go from here, I'll never be far away. Let us prepare now. Look! The sun sets through its red veils. The moon rises through silver. The land shines with a web of power, a web whose strands reach to the farthest stars, whose center lies in the heart of every living thing. Uruz, Algiz, Bekana. I have no home. Awareness is my home. I have no life and death. I make the tide of breathing my life and death. The whole cartel complex has gone. Look at that. Bare earth all across the plain. Everything's so... so clean. Crichton, the security guards, those creatures. Whoever was down there, well, they're somewhere else now. On Gemma. Let's hope they've been given a chance also. And let's hope that neither of us makes a mess of it this time. You won't, I'm sure. Look after yourself, Doctor. I'll be waiting. All right, Dale. Let's see what can be done with this planet of yours. <laughs> Look! Out there! Crichton. Another planet. Look at the color of the sunlight coming in through the windows. I'm not sure I want to look. Sinjin, I'm frightened. Do not be frightened. You are safe here. You have your wish to see other worlds, and you are still alive. Remick sent us here. No one person accomplished this. It is the conscious will of all creatures who have become aware of life's potential. Do not fear. The swarth are not on your world. Live out your life in wonder. And, and you will be the happiest of men. Well-being I won, and wisdom too. From a word to a word, I was led to a word. From a deed to another deed. I was led to a word. From a deed to another deed. Hmm. Well, old girl. He's here. Somewhere inside you, justice is waiting. And I won't let Truman or myself down. It's been a long war with too many casualties. Truman must have understood that. Now it's time for one final battle. And for the first time in a very long while, I feel able to stand up and fight. Next from Audio Visuals, Justice.
Morning Solados. Headlines today. Solanum terrorists promise new wave of bomb attacks. The latest in awesome mining technology. And recently elected admin Proctomus in Nirvana indicates new hopes for Solanum Dominion status. All that and more coming up. The justice is close now. So, we check the dots okay. Remember, we need a guy like this to help get us through this crap. The Saladins can't protect themselves. Well, we'd better be going, Brocco. And you, Doctor, are coming with me. Its powers are now almost infinite. Infinite? That sounds like trouble. Almost. And then Proctor Lucinda Vrana says the terrorists will never win. For win. For win. For win. For win. For win.